Hello, I'm Nicholas Henshaw, I'm the Dean of Chelmsford, and this is my worship podcast for Sunday the 6th of December, which is both the second Sunday of Advent and the Feast of St Nicholas, and we'll touch on both of those in these reflections. First, some words from Psalm 116. What can ever repay God's gift to me? I raise the cup of freedom as I call on God's name. I fulfil my vows to you, Lord, standing before your assembly, in the courts of your house, within the heart of Jerusalem. Alleluia. So as we enter into prayer today and prepare our minds and our hearts to hear the gospel, first take a moment to be still. Come into God's presence with a a deep felt desire to meet with God now. Know that like Hagar in the desert, her discovery that God is a God who saw her. Know that God sees you and he's looking at you now with great love. Pause for a moment and be still. And as you hear these opening words of Mark's Gospel, Ask God what God wants you to hear today. Pay attention to what God is inviting you to notice. This is Mark chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. It's an extraordinary passage, and I can't resist a slightly ridiculous story from the early church about one of the lines there. Uh, There was a group of early Christians called the Ebionites. They were a kind of radical vegetarian tendency in early Christianity. And they couldn't bear the fact that their great hero, John the Baptist, uh, wasn't a vegetarian. And so they changed the Greek text. I know it's it's incredibly naughty to do that, as we know. know, That way leads to uh, perdition, if you're not careful. Uh, And the phrase... uh, uh, the phrase the phrase used here, locusts and wild honey, uh, is acrides can meliagrion, locusts and wild honey. You only have to change one word, one letter, one letter in the first word, to produce encrides and wild honey. And encrides means little cakes. So the Ebionites in their gospel it said, and John the Baptist was in the desert eating little cakes and wild honey. Unsurprising that hasn't survived as a version of Mark, but it adds a certain. Uh, frisson of amusement as we tackle the beginning of this extraordinary gospel. Now John the Baptist of course comes roaring out of the Judean desert in these opening pages of Mark quoting the prophet Isaiah and inviting us to turn our lives around. The words that traditionally translated repent in most English Bibles actually literally means change your mind, change your way of thinking, Turn around your whole way of looking at the world. It's a big word. John is inviting us to turn our lives around in response to the good news of Jesus Christ. And the urgency we hear in these opening verses is sustained throughout Mark's Gospel. One of his favourite words is immediately. And he uses it even in sentences where it doesn't really fit. He wants to get the point over that we need to respond to this extraordinary reality that is happening in Jesus Christ. It was claimed in the early years of the Christian community that Mark's gospel was written 
at the dictation of Peter. Certainly, what we have is eyewitness testimony to the mission and ministry of the Lord. And whether it is, a, it is Peter or others among Christ's first followers, their excitement and response to the message of the gospel is an invitation to us to go deeper, to go deeper with the Lord and to renew our own discipleship in response. So let's first note that urgency, that urgency in Mark's gospel, which also spills over into real frustration on the part of Jesus as the gospel continues. Mark makes it absolutely clear uh, in the heart of his gospel that as Jesus preaches, teaches, heals and reconciles, as he models a very different way of being the Messiah, being the anointed one of God, no one, not even Peter, let alone the rest of the apostles, seems to get the point. We, of course, are let into the secret in that very first line of today's gospel, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We journey with Jesus, knowing his true identity, that he has come to set us free as the Messiah and enable us to respond to John the Baptist's Advent invitation. But extraordinarily, in the rest of the Gospel, the first person who actually comes to recognise what we already know, that Jesus is the Christ, is the pagan centurion at the foot of the cross. From first to last, this Gospel asks us, how are you going to respond? But let me finish today's reflection on a seasonal note. Today is the Feast of St Nicholas. I share his name and I love his story. Nicholas served the church in the city of Myra in what today we call Turkey. All the stories told about him, his safeguarding of the young, his rescue of shipwrecked sailors, speak of the compassion and love of the gospel, his response to the person of Christ. Probably the most famous story is of three daughters whose poverty-stricken and widowed father had tragically come to the terrible decision that his only option was to sell them into slavery. The night before he was going to carry out this appalling act, Nicholas heard about it, went round to the house secretly with three bags of gold and then, well, there are two versions of what he did next. One says he dropped them through the window the other says he went up onto the flat roof of the house and dropped them down the chimney. Ah, is that reminiscent of anything else that happens at Christmas time? And those presents that set those three girls free is why in many European countries, children open their presents today on the 6th of December, on St Nicholas Day, remembering his generosity of spirit and his love for the poor. And Nicholas, of course, is the original Santa Claus. Santa Claus is simply a version of Saint Nicholas, the name. His generosity, his love of the Lord and his love of the poor. That was his response to the gift of Jesus. So let me end with a, a beautiful prayer for this season. With tender comfort and transforming power, you come into our midst, O God of mercy and might. Make ready a way in the wilderness, clear a straight path in our hearts, and form us into a repentant people, that the advent of your Son may find us watchful and eager for the glory he reveals. We ask this through him whose coming is certain and whose day draws near, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Blessings on the advent journey.